Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the live streams. I'm, bl I'm glad to be back in the shop and glad that we're going here. Sorry I was late today. Uh, I got kind of, there's a lot of things going on. We're launching uh, some big stuff. Uh, if you guys didn't hear already, I'm rebranding the business name. It's not going to be Northside Custom Crafts. This is actually a, a Jake Thompson t-shirt. I finally got some uh, swag from his store, uh, but we're going to be rebranding and there's a lot of stuff going on that took up time this morning and then I had to fit in a physical therapy training session thing and basically I was an hour and a half late uh, getting going. So I apologize, but it's going to be fun today. We're going to have a little bit of fun with glitter again. Uh, so my wife got me this this uh, case of stuff. She's got one of those Cricut kind of vinyl things and uh, <clears throat> on the website that she was buying vinyl from. Oh, I guess that, let me hold it like this. She just picked up this thing and so let's try and kind of get it in close. It's, I know there's like a little bit of a glare there but so they're little leaves. Little holiday you know fall kind of. Let's see if I can get pick up. I just left these things in a pile. I don't know. I can't. I, there we go. There's there's one. That's kind of cool, huh? So anyway, she saw that, picked it up for me, and I thought, let's uh, cast some some leaves. Yeah, it's it's the middle of fall. We're we're in the middle of everything going on. I, depending on where you're at, a lot of the leaves probably have changed at this point. But you know, leaves are turning. They're falling to the ground. Should be kind of fun, I thought. So, and it's always a good kind of refresher. I know there's a lot of people that kind of pop in and out. A lot of you guys that are, uh, you know, that have been around for a, a while and, and make it to most of the, like the regulars, let's say. Um, you guys have probably seen some of the glitter suspension videos that I've done in the past on the live stream. But it's a good one because we always have new people watching and, and kind of popping into the streams. Um, suspending things like glitter is a really good topic, I think. A lot of people, this is a, one of the big questions I always get. So I thought it'd be kind of fun today. We're just kind of easing back into everything after the vacation. Um, so just to let everybody know, we just got back from Hawaii and it was a fabulous trip. I know some there's a couple people saying that they wanted to hear about the, the trip a little bit. So I won't go into great detail, but it was really fun. I apologize for not posting as much as I uh, as I was was gonna you know try to, uh, but we were pretty busy the whole time. Um, so we did a lot of hiking, we did a lot of snorkeling. Um, I actually did some some you know physical therapy workouts, which is awesome in Hawaii. If you have to work out, like walk, run, do anything you know like uh, stretching or calisthenics. If you have to do that, it's way better outside, outdoors in Hawaii. I just want to mention that if you're if you're going, it's it's a good place to do some exercise. Uh, and we ate a lot of food, so it was pretty awesome. We had about ten days there, uh, and we went to the Big Island. That's our favorite. We got married there. And uh, if anybody's going to Hawaii, I would highly recommend going to the Big Island. Um, it's just our favorite thing. It's 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 bigger than all the rest. It's got so many different things on it. Whereas, you know, some of the other ones are kind of one trick pony kind of islands, I guess. You got the volcano, you got Mauna Kea, you got the, the Hilo side is kind of like your, your more jungly side. And then the Kona side is a little bit drier, let's say, even though it is a tropical island. Um, all kinds of different things going on though. There's great snorkeling all over the place. So I highly recommend it. And uh, if you go there, uh, head, head to Kona Brewing Company. That's one of our favorite places. If you like beer, they got good beers, but they got awesome pizzas and stuff too. So anyway, a couple good things there. Uh, not an outdoor person? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough to be inside in Hawaii, honestly. Um, it's just there's so much fun stuff to do, and it's so beautiful. So yeah, a bit far. Yeah, it's a bit far. But, you know, if you ever go, <laughs> you know, uh, Christina has snow up in Sweden. Yeah, actually, we do, too, up here. We got three, so we, we left, and the day that we left, they got three feet of snow in Tahoe. It was nuts. I was like, well, part of me, because I snowboard, I was like, I wish I kind of wish I was there, but there's not enough base or anything. I didn't miss any snow days. Um, nothing's open up here, so I was like, I'd rather be in Hawaii anyway, so good, good luck, guys. So anyway, so uh, let's see. Is there anything else going on that I need to mention? So uh, for, for everybody, make sure that you guys are signed up to the email newsletter on my website. Um, that's where I, we're going to be announcing all the good stuff or, or just on social media. Uh, we'll be announcing all the stuff with the rebranding. And I'm going to be having, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. We're going to be having a pretty big sale uh, for the launch of the new website. So be kind of keeping your eyes peeled for that if you are you know in the market, if you need pen blanks. 
Uh, if you need uh, aluminum honeycomb or any of the you know, glitters or the, the color shift powder, anything on my website that I sell basically, um, be looking for that. Another thing that I'm going to mention, I'm going to be having a Black Friday sale on my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. And so I always do a 50% off on that for Black Friday. So that's going to be um, like, you know, Friday through Monday type thing, like kind of cover the whole gamut of Friday and Cyber Monday and Small Business Saturday and all the whatevers. So yeah, yeah, we got three feet up there. It was nuts. It was one of the biggest storms in October, I think, like ever we've ever had so yeah golf you can golf all over the place there's there's good pretty good golfing on uh on the big island too i think yeah yeah there's good yeah sorry i don't i used to golf i I used to really be into golfing the problem is now it just for me to sit there for four hours playing golf it's just i don't have enough time for that kind of thing and i don't have the money anymore when i was a, a a real estate appraiser in vegas i had all kinds of money and time so it was fine but not now so let's see here. All right. So I think we can probably get rolling here. So again, I, I want to kind of, you know, cover this glitter suspension thing because I think it's a big deal. A lot of people do a lot of things with glitters in them. Um, I, there's all kinds of these shape glitters out there. So I have these ones, like I said, my wife bought these off of, I don't even know what website. It was literally a, a site that had like the vinyl for your like Cricut machines, you know, the, the little vinyl, um, cutting machine. I don't know how, what they're called, but, um, so you can get it there. You can get it a lot of different places on Etsy. There's uh, glitter hippo is one of my go-to places. Um, one thing I do want to mention though, with all the shipping issues, cause a lot, all this stuff basically is coming from China. Uh, you know, if, if you need glitter or you need to restock glitter, um, and they have it, I would kind of stock up on it a little bit because there's a few of them that I was, I was going to be doing some, uh, of my tinsel glitter blanks. Glitter Hippo's out of like three of the colors that I use, uh, so kind of sucks. So if you can snag it and you need to, to replenish inventory or anything like that, maybe get two or three, uh, you know, right now, just because things are kind of crazy. But uh, lots of different places you can get it, probably eBay um, and, and all that stuff. So uh, be kind of looking, and there's even like little random websites that sell shaped glitter. And they got shapes of every kind. I'm actually, I want to expand a little bit on, on some of the things that I actually sell. Um, I have the, the autism puzzle pieces. They're like multicolored different color pieces, uh, puzzle pieces. And I have shamrocks that I sell in my store right now. Um, and I think those are the only shape glitters that I sell right now. I wanted to kind of expand that a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, have these in my store regularly, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to play with these and see how they look especially for fall. Sometimes it's kind of cool to do things for certain like, you know, holidays or, um, you know, times of year. So anyway, um, what I recommend if you're going to be doing this stuff, I don't really recommend if you're going to make pen blanks, don't do it in a, you know, kind of fairly shallow, flat, you know, like the tray style things or even, um, even this, let me find one. Um, not even the single pen blank ones. And the reason that I don't recommend doing that, the reason I, I recommend going vertical with it is because they are, no matter what you do, uh, pretty much most, mm, I'm trying to think if there's a scenario that, that, that doesn't apply to this necessarily, but I, I think most of the casting resins that we use, there isn't a resin that is so thick that it's going to hold the stuff in place. Um, it is going to move no matter what you do a little bit. So the game plan for this is number one, you have to wait until the end of the working time for sure. Um, you're going to mix up your resin. You're going to, you know, and you're going to mix in, you know, we'll go through all this thing. You know, we're going to do the whole thing start for, to finish, but you're going to mix in your glitter into the cup and then just keep on mixing and mixing. And you're going to keep an eye on that temperature and the, the viscosity of it. And you want to wait until it's, you know, kind of at that end of the working time where it's starting to get pretty thick and you're only going to have, you know, maybe a minute or two or whatever, very short period of time until it literally hardens up. So you're not going to pour it in your mold until the end. And again, I don't recommend using these things because no matter what you do, even if you wait until like the, <laughs> it would be very difficult to get it to the point where it is just flat out not going to move down at all. Like, you know, gravity sink at all. 
right? And so if you're going to only, if, if all you got is like three quarters to an inch of space, what's going to happen is your blank is going to have all your glitter in the bottom half, basically, of these types of things. So I don't recommend doing it this way. I just think that you're going to be not happy with them. Um, it's much better. And I, I realize that in some cases you can't really do that and you're going to have to just kind of wing it. Uh, but what I recommend if you're just doing, you know, normal kind of like pen blanks and things like that, go vertical and make your blanks a little bit longer, you know, than they would have normally been. That way, if it does sink a little bit, you just cut that off if there's just this blank area at the top. OK, so it's a brilliant way to do it, I think, um, you know. And we've covered this before, but the other thing, so if you have to, if, if, if whatever you're doing, you have to do a brick of it or something like that, or, or pour it kind of thin, what I would recommend doing in that case is you're going to be wasting a lot of resin, <laughs> most likely, but, you know, instead of making like a one inch deep pour, make it a two inch deep pour, you know, like, like almost double it. That way you're just basically cutting off. It's the same idea as doing it vertical cut off the stuff that's just clear where it kind of sank through. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of it for anybody that doesn't want to watch the rest of this. You know, if you're watching the replay, that's how it works. You know, that's, that's, that's kind of everything. So let's get started on this thing. I'm going to stop and see who's in the, in the chat. Uh, let's see here. You feel like vertical has more movement? I don't, personally. Um, but, I don't know. Let's see here. Who was first? Kim was here first. Man, you were here early. And Gene is here. Mutt Nuts from Maryland. How's it going? And Dominic. You guys were all here pretty early. Can't see all. Man, there's a lot of chatting going on. And I saw. Uh, so Phillips here. Let's see here. Who else? What did Dominic say? Her good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Supposed to get snow this weekend. Uh, yeah, I hope it just dumps on us. Hey, there's Brian. How's it going, buddy? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I, lo I love Black Friday sales too. Oh, actually, speaking of Black Friday sales, I also heard from a little birdie that Turner's Warehouse is going to be doing it up this year. They're going to have some pretty wicked uh, Black Friday sales, and I believe if memory serves correctly. So what, what I would honestly recommend is make sure that you're, you're either following them on their Instagram or Facebook or sign up for their email newsletter. That's actually, they do a really good job with their newsletter. Um, they have sales and do, like things going on all the time. So if you're into pen kits and all the stuff that Turner's Warehouse sells, you want to get on their newsletter. Um, but for Black Friday, definitely, and I'm going to be mentioning it on my social media, but I think it's starting on the, the 17th they're they're not messing around this isn't like oh it's black friday they're they're doing like two weeks of black friday kind of deals so uh, make sure to kind of keep your eyes peeled on turner's warehouse because they're going to have some pretty awesome sales going on this year um one of the things that i was talking to chad and and you know how we were just talking about the shipping issues and i was i, I was on the phone with chad you know just a couple days ago and i was like so are you guys like you know, kind of screwed on inventory. And he's like, actually, not really, because we last year, um, we, we, we didn't really order enough and we didn't order enough early enough. And so we started kind of running out of stuff last year at the end of the year. So this year we ordered stuff early. And so he's like, we're stocked up. So it's a pretty good deal that they were kind of on top of it this year. So, you know, a lot of other companies are kind of screwed, uh, honestly, at this point. So um, they're going to be having lots of fun sales, so make sure to, to sign up for their stuff. All right, so let's see here. Oh, you bought some aluminum. Nice. Well, welcome to the stream. I'm glad that... So hopefully next year I should be going to SWAT again, uh, unless something weird changes. Tentatively, uh, should be going back. Um, and then I also want to mention that uh, early, kind of, kind of com coming up early, if you guys are on the West Coast or want to go to L.A. in... Oh, shoot. I think it's in February, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, there's, there's a Pen Turners gathering. They, they're calling it the Pen Turners Expo. SoCal Pen Turners Expo, which sounds way cooler than just a gathering as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I'm definitely going to be going. I always like to support people that are on the West Coast because it just feels like we really we're unserved out here. Um, part of the reason is because the states are, are gigantic. You know, like Nevada's huge. California's huge. And so you have like not that many states in 
And so it's, it's, I don't know, there's just less people out here, I would say. So we're kind of a little bit underserved when it comes to events and things like that. So anytime they have an event in, you know, Phoenix, you know, Nevada, California, Oregon, those types of things, Colorado, Utah, whatever, you know, this kind of West Coast kind of area, Western half of the U.S. I like to try to, to get out there if I can. So, and, it, and it's fun. Yeah, it's in Anaheim. February 18th. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Anaheim this year. Um, at the Marriott so and I think that the tickets are either on sale or they're going on sale like like in a week type thing so make sure to get your your tickets and they have uh, discounts at the Marriott hotel to stay there too so it'd be sweet hey yaks here what's up man okay so like I said let's uh let's get rolling so what I want to do uh is I'm gonna do it this way I kind of have a little bit of a routine type thing um Let's switch to the other views. Check out this shirt. This is the brightest shirt I have ever worn in my life. I feel like I'm like on a soccer team. It's like a jersey material. So anyway, if you guys aren't following Jake, make sure to head over to his channel. I'm gonna I'm gonna go get a link. Uh, Jake rocks. And if you guys aren't watching their live streams, uh, so it's it's Jake and Jamie Page are doing, man, they're doing Saturday morning cartoons, they call it. It's awesome. Um, they're really doing a, a fabulous job with their live stream. It's just amazing. So uh, make sure to watch that if you can. It's you know, obviously Saturday mornings. Very fun. They do resin casting and all kinds. Of, oh, that's not Jake Thompson. What the heck? How about I, oh, there he is. That was weird. Okay, so here's a link to Jake's channel. Subscribe, and subscribe to Jamie too, because he does awesome stuff as well. Um, man, I'll tell you what, also, Jake does like, I think he does a giveaway like every live stream. So if you're into giveaways, definitely check that. I need to do a giveaway again sometime. Maybe we'll do a giveaway for some of these blanks next time. Okay, so let's switch to the double cam. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I have a little bit of a setup here. I got a little, I need to make some new ones of these. These are terrible. I have, I wanna get a round one. I wanna make a round one for my, my uh, two and a half gallon pressure pots sometime. And I just haven't got around to it. So this thing holds, I'm, we're gonna do one, two, three, four. We're gonna do five, let's just do six blanks. We're gonna do pen blanks first. I'm gonna step in front of the camera here and I'm just gonna be spraying this with stoner mold release you always want to i always find especially with the well yeah, with anything alumilite or um alumilite clear or clear slow or epoxies you definitely want to spray your pvc pipes uh, because otherwise your resin will get stuck in them um, if you're if you're casting with polyester resin most of those shrink so much that you really don't have to worry about it um, and that's one uh, again one of the reasons why I don't like that stuff because it shrinks a ton. Not very fun. Plus, it smells terrible. If you like the smell of chemical spill, I highly recommend picking up some polyester resin. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm not like it's not dripping out, but I am trying to cover. The whole thing i realize that there's not a good camera angle but the thing with spraying this stuff you don't want to spray it anywhere where you might like sometimes i have things laying around that i might cast that way so i always spray this way so that the overspray isn't covering everything that you know i might be casting someday all right so connie's here what's up how's it going yeah it's a good show i know uh, one of the problems I, I can never I'm never gonna make that one live. It's so early. Um, I go to bed late. I, I'm a night owl, and <laughs> like whenever it starts. So, you know, I'm on the West Coast, and uh, you know, Jake's in Texas. So, whenever it's starting, like there's no way I'm making it. So, I check out the replays. So uh, these are the these are the um, the plugs that you can get at Turner's Warehouse. They are awesome. 
If you do pipe casting, you really want to get some of these things. Um, they're amazing. Um, one, one little tip, if you're going to use these, see how this thing's all kind of like ripped a little bit here? And the reason for that is when I, what, what happens is, you know, you cut the PVC pipe and, and the inside can be pretty sharp. So not a bad idea. I don't know. It's not a big deal, you know, to get a little bit of ripping on this, but if it's super sharp, that's what causes that, that little kind of, that's what caused this on mine. Um, if you want to, you can maybe take a little piece of sandpaper or whatever, and just kind of um, ease that sharp edge on the inside after you've cut your PVC and you won't get issues with that. It'll, it'll just kind of preserve your plugs. I definitely recommend doing that on big pipes um, because you know, the bigger ones, bigger plugs, they cost more. So I don't really do it on my older, well, on, on, on three quarter inch PVC pipes, but I don't know. I might someday. We'll see. Are these all the same length? I like to have the same length of pipes, you know? One, two, three, four. What's everybody else up to, man? I've been gone for like, I was gone for a week and a half, well, 10 days. And I kind of just, I'll tell you what, every once in a while, it is extremely nice to just unplug. I didn't really pay attention to much at all on uh, social media or anything like that or emails. I checked my emails, but I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to them unless they were absolutely necessary you know it's kind of nice to unplug a bit okay so we got everything set up there um i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use this i actually already had this i was this was gonna be like an overflow pipe for something else i might respray this just to get just to make sure but it's a little bit longer and that's kind of the kind of the length that i want here so i'm gonna go off screen and just while we're doing this I'm going to go and uh, spray this pipe. Make sure it's nice and good. And then it'll be ready for the next round. <clears throat> I don't know how much of this. Well, I got quite a bit of glitter, so I could maybe make two of these handles, but that's okay. No biggie. Okay, so I'm just going to put that off screen there. I don't know where the heck is, where is the rest of my clear pvc pipes one and a half inch ones huh. i got some white ones oh i know where they are they're in the place where i put my pvc pipes Duh. we'll do we'll try to do two of these so I'm going to go spray this off again, off, off camera here. We'll do two handles. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and another thing, you know, it sounds like I'm spraying a lot here and, and uh, you know, I'm covering it pretty well, but I'm kind of holding it away. I'm not like, you know, spraying it right there. I'm kind of holding it a little, little ways away. So it's not, so it's a little bit kind of just dusting the whole thing rather than creating like a big blob of moisture slick dripping down in there okay we got two of those guys same height that's good we got our pvc pipes for the pen blanks and i gotta figure out How much resin these are going to take now? So give me one second while I look through my book. Here we go. I got my notes from doing the, the autism. Actually, you know what? I think we did this already. I should have notes from the last time we did shamrocks or whatever the only problem is this book fell apart and i have no clue where the front and the back is <laughs> oh man oh that's dyed shavings well 
That's great. Yeah, okay. I think I think we're in the front here. Huh. Kinda of been a while it looks like. There it is. Let's see, what did we do? Oh, we did 10. That's okay. All right, so I'm going to be writing down the date here. Get that out of the way. Get our little booklet here. So today is 11, 10. Oh, man. Time is flying by. We're doing leaf glitter. And let's see here. So number one, we're doing pen blanks. It looks like we're going to do Okay, we're going to do 275 grams total or so. We're going to do 137 and then I'm going to do a little bit of extra part B in this. Um, now, again, for anybody that's kind of new, doesn't really understand, I use Alumalite Clear Slow. So this, the only, this is the only resin that I would recommend doing this with. You're not gonna, you don't want to be messing around with the ratio um, with any other resin. Definitely not epoxies. You don't want extra Part B or, or well, you don't want extra hardener in it. Um, with Alumalite Clear Slow, though, adding a little bit of extra Part B in the mixture can just help ward off any blushing. So, and it's not going to, you know, really mess up your ratio or anything like that. It's, it'll, it'll be okay. It's not a big deal. So, but like I said, it's, it's only specific to Alumalite Clear Slow. So not Amazing Clear Cast. Alumalite Clear Slow. I guess I should do it this way. Okay. And you can, you know, the slow or the regular version, either one of the, the, the Alumalite Clears. Okay. I always have to put a big gigantic asterisk, read the, read the fine print, because you don't want to be messing around with your, your mix ratios usually. But um, when I'm doing clear castings, and that's what we're doing. We're not going to add anything. We're just going to do a clear tube and add the glitter. Now, eventually, someday, one thing that I've never done is I don't know what the timing, the temperature and timing and all that stuff is for uh, Amazing Clear Cast Plus. But eventually, I, I want to figure that out. I need to do the testing um, because I would rather use that resin because it has the UV inhibitors in it. Um, so it'll ward off yellowing for a lot longer than Alumalite Clear Slow. The problem is that stuff takes, it's got like a 40 minute working time. And I'm, I just haven't had time to mess with it, you know. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add about... We're going to add about two teaspoons, basically, of this glitter stuff. I don't know how this is going to work exactly. I might need to put it in a little baggie first. It just That's how I measure this stuff out. Um, you don't want to put too much of this glitter stuff in if you're going to be turning something because it kind of... Uh, you can get a lot more chipping. It's not particularly... It's like a super smooth surface, right? So, you know, it's not like the resin really like loves binding to it. Um, and so they can kind of rip out and stuff. And if you've literally loaded it up with that stuff, I mean, really the blank, it, it becomes weak because the, the, the resin bond is not that good. So I don't recommend super loading it, but you need enough for a pen blank. Okay, so um, I've found that, you know, about two teaspoons for, you know, about five or six pen blanks. Actually, I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to alter this slightly. I'm going to do two kind of like big teaspoons on this because this would actually work for 10, 10 tubes. Um, 10, let's see here. Okay, so we actually want about 300. And, okay, so we're going to redo this. We're going to put 330 grams of resin. So we're going to go 165 and then we're going to go 167 
Um, so part A is 165 grams, 167 of part B. Just a little extra. You don't want to go too far with this, like one gram per hundred or 200, you know, something like that. Um, just a little extra part B, that's all I do. Okay, and then we're going to put two kind of big-ish teaspoons of the stuff in. Uh, okay, so we got that ready. These are super easy to make. That's one of the nice things. Everything goes pretty smoothly. Let me get my gloves on. We had Jake Thompson and Jamie. Dude, check it out. Check it out, guys. Look at this. Huh? I finally, I finally got a cool shirt. These things are so bright. They're really lightweight, too. I feel like I could go for like a triathlon in this thing. It's like a jersey. So anyway, thank you guys for the super chats and for joining the fun. I was just talking about the, the live stream, the, the Saturday morning cartoons. It's a shame because it's way too early for me because I'm going to be not getting up for that that early. But I like to watch the replays. They're so fun. So I appreciate what you guys do. Thank you for the super chats. I appreciate it. See here. All right. So back back to the back to the casting here. We this is some serious stuff going on right now. So we're doing some uh, we're doing some of these goodies. Oh man, look at that goodie stuff. I don't know what this brand is. It doesn't really matter. Pretty much, if you find shaped glitter, that's like this kind of holographic stuff. Like I'm pretty sure it all comes from the same bin somewhere in China. So it doesn't really matter what the label says. I don't think. Um, just pick it up. Find the cheapest deal and you'll be good to go. All right, so let's get a cup ready. I have been pouring gigantic blanks, so I actually pulled the pump off of my part B. So to get used to that. I, 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 don't, I really like using the pumps when I'm doing Alumilite clear, but we'll be all right. I'll be okay. Saturday morning cartoon shirt. Dude, I will get you my address. Is it coming from England though? You guys got like a spread shirt or a something? Or they, they, uh, I don't have a problem going and buying one if you got one. Yeah, it's an athlete. I'm an athlete. I'm a resin casting athlete. You got to say it with that, that extra athlete. Okay, so we're making, uh, what are we doing here? We're gonna go with, where did my, what is going on? There it is. 165 grams of part A, that's what we're doing right now. And my arm, see this is the only problem. Maybe I should move my resin. Cause I always do this and it's just silly for the overhead cam. Oh, actually, that, that does remind me about something I can kind of talk about. Did I zero that out? I'm pretty sure I zeroed that out. I just want to double check. Um, one thing that we can, I can bring up. Um, so I've been talking about getting a new computer for the live streams for quite a while now. Five, let's see here. And I was going to get one of the M1 Mac minis, but then they came out with the M1 Pro chips. And I just think that it would be a complete waste of money for me to buy an M1 chip in a Mac mini right now, I think it, I'm just gonna replace it. So I'm gonna wait until the, the new M1 Pro or Pro Max Mac minis come out. What the heck, this, this thing, there we go. And this scale is like messed up, Something, something's weird. Cause it flips out every once in a while. I got new ones on the way. And try out a couple different ones. Okay, so we're at 165. I'm gonna zero that out. And then we wanna do 167 of the part B. Just a little extra. And again, this only applies to Alumilite Clear Slow. This is the only, oh, that's not the label. Alumilite Clear Slow. Uh, or regular set. Alumilite Clear or Clear Slow. Not Amazing Clear Cast. That's totally different. 167. So there's a little bit of a weight. Obviously, it's not going to make that much difference, uh, you know, with the computer stuff and all that. But I do have the the cash for it. But I, I just, I just, don't, I think it would just be a tremendous waste of money to buy the old computer for something like streaming. 
though. 167, got to pay attention here. <laughs> I don't like using the, the jug because I always go over. I'm, I'm much better at sneaking up on stuff out of the pump. Okay, I think we're there. 160, uh, that's some scale. 167, I think we're there. Okay. So we got our cup here. Now, what I'm going to need to do is I need to put this stuff in a, in a baggie, I think. Just not really going to work the way it is because I use a teaspoon, you know, like a, a measuring spoon to, to measure the stuff out. So what I do is just stick it into, you could put it in a cup if you wanted a bigger, you know, something kind of a bigger cup type thing, but I just find it's, it's just as easy putting it into a, a baggie. There's a lot of that stuff. Not that bad. Okay. Oh, we got one in there already. You grab my teaspoon, teaspoon, and we're going to do two kind of big teaspoons. I can do this right. There's one. And there's two. All right. That's all you need. Uh, for pen blanks, you know, the thing is, if you're doing pen blanks, you kind of need a certain amount, okay? That's why, uh, you know, I'm mentioning how much the, the, the teaspoon thing. So it's like, you're looking at about a teaspoon per 100 grams. It's probably a decent way to look at it, maybe, per, per 150, actually. Teaspoon per 150 grams. I'm just going to tap a little bit. There's, there's too many in there. They're not going to get out. And I dumped these out for the picture, and that was stupid. Because <laughs> these things are hard to get off surfaces like that. But anyway, um, yeah, so maybe a teaspoon per 150, that's not 150 grams of resin. That's not a bad way to go, I don't think. I'm just going to use a, these stir sticks. And then we'll just stir it up. Little darling. I don't want to get into the singing thing like Carl did because then people request songs like Gilligan's Island. Besides, I'm terrible at singing, so. Daryl, how's it going? Welcome. And Daryl, too. Cheryl and Daryl. And Clyde, how's it going? All right, so... Typically, I like to, to mix my resin up before I put stuff in. I didn't really, wasn't really thinking about it. Um, and I definitely suggest beginners, if you're not, you know, you're kind of starting out with resin. Um, I definitely recommend leaving it clear. Don't add stuff to it and do simpler projects. But get used to how long it takes uh, and, and get a little bit of muscle memory kind of, you know, with your, your mixing so that, you know, down the road, if you need to put, you know, glitters or something in in it before you mix it up for some reason um, that that can give you a little extra time if if you just put your part a or, or whatever it doesn't matter which one it is but just one or the other parts in your cup you can add you know dyes or you know pearl powders or or whatever you can add stuff if let's say that you needed to do your you want to do a 20 color pen blank you know pen blanks you're going to need probably in many cases a little extra time um, unless you're using a slower setting resin, but, uh, you know, in some cases you may need some extra time and where you can get some extra time is by mixing your colorants into the part a or whatever you pour in there first before adding the second part. Cause once you add the part B, then the resin, the clock is ticking and it's going to harden up at some point. So this resin that I'm using here, Lumilite clear, slow is a 12 minute working time and i got plenty of time you know for most things but you know if i was going to do you know a ton of colors or whatever um, or in the summer you have less working time you know there's there's lots of reasons to to get a little extra time and that's one way to do it but in general i typically recommend just mix up your resin when it's clear so that you can see what's going on in the cup because there's visual identifiers that kind of tell you when you know 
definitely when it's not mixed enough. Um, that's for, for certain. If it's cloudy looking and hazy with little wispy trails mi mixing around in there, it ain't mixed up enough. That means there's unmixed part A or part B going on. All right, so I'm gonna try my best to get these things back that are on the, can you guys see this? Yeah, you can see. I'm gonna just scoop them. Sometimes this works. Sometimes you pick up dust and all kinds of other junk off your work surface. Sometimes they just don't even come off. All right, so I got the majority of those. We're good. Save the, the flowers. Now, um, or those are leaves. Um, one thing, while we're sitting here waiting, so again, the key to doing this, to getting this stuff suspended, um, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but not really. What ends up happening is these things end up sinking in most resins most of the time, especially when your resin is thinner viscosity, they're going to sink like a rock. So the, the key to doing this is you got to wait till the end of the working time. That's, that's just what you got to do. And I also recommend uh, going vertical. Um, Philip, other people said that they think that it, it, it seems to, I don't know, move more vertically. I don't, I don't personally find that. But I think that you're better off with this because what I do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour, you know, let's say that I, usually my pen blanks are five inches long, okay? So I'm going to pour about a six inch blank and I'm going to cut off an inch. That way, if this stuff does sink, the top that's kind of clear with no little leaf things is just, I cut it off and I, and I move on with my life. I find it pretty hard. If you're going to pour in one of these types of things, you know, and you're only pouring an inch, uh, for pen blanks and stuff, it's going to sink and you're going to have half full, you know, blanks. So there is a way to do it. You'd have to make about twice the, the thickness, you know, kind of again, but that's a lot of wasted resin. So I recommend just going vertical. Now, if you're doing, so for pen blanks, you want to add more glitter. You want to kind of pack stuff in because you're going to turn it down so thin by the time you're done turning it and drilling out the center and all that, there's not much resin left. So you need to put as much as possible in there. But I also don't recommend loading these things up crazily um, just because these little glitter things don't necessarily stick to the resin amazingly. They'll kind of rip out. So, but for, for doing handles and things like that, bottle stoppers, um, you don't really need as much of this stuff because you're not going to drill out the center. You're going to leave it intact. So you only need, you know, so much. And a lot of times when you're dealing with like handle blanks and all that stuff, um, a lot of times, you know, less is more when you're dealing with just effects and stuff like that. You want to see more, see through it more. You want more, more dead space or clear space and, and have, you know, little, little bits of these things kind of really stand out more, I find. Either way, uh, one way or the other, not a big deal, but you can get away with doing a lot less in, in something that's going to remain, you know, kind of thick. So the temperature that I'm looking at for these things is about 107, 108. Um, that's always a, a, a contention thing. You know, everybody wants to know what temperature should I pour at? And uh, it depends is really the, the answer I find. Um, but in general, if you're using Alumilite clear or clear slow, uh, so it's at 84 degrees right now, we're nowhere near it. So um, we're just gonna have to kind of wait. But in the winter, uh, what I find is I'm usually pretty good to go at like 95 to 100 pouring if I'm doing color swirl blanks. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to extend that a little bit and we want to go to, you know, 107, 108 um, to, to wait for this to thicken up even more and be closer to the time when it just flat hardens. All right. That's kind of the key to this stuff. And that's the key to um, a lot of things that you're trying to lock in place with resins. You kind of need to wait till the end of the working time um, for two reasons. One, it gets thicker and that just keeps, you know, dyes from, from bleeding together uh, and, and doing that kind of stuff. The resin doesn't move around a lot if you pour it at the end like that. The other thing that you're doing is you're waiting until the end of the, so it's thicker, but you're also waiting to a point where there's only like a few minutes at the most left before it fully hardens up and locks everything in place, right? So that's kind of the key, you know, waiting till the end type thing. Thicken it up a little bit and also just wait until it's, it's you know, not going to move at all anymore. All right. So that's kind of the game plan. We're waiting until 108, 107, 108, somewhere around there. 
And one thing that I recommend you do, so I was saying it depends because what I find is right now it's 68 degrees in my shop. All right, so resins, um, if it were 95 degrees in the shop, the resin that's in this jug would be thinner viscosity just, just as sitting there. So as temperature rises, your resins thin out. And this is why I think that it really depends on what the temperature is in your shop, what, you know, obviously what resin you're using because they're all different viscosities, but um, it really depends on the temperature in your shop when you want to pour this. Because I find that if I pour, you know, let's, if, I, if I poured everything at 95 degrees, and that's kind of the bare minimum, I would say, uh, no matter what temperature it is, but 95, if that's when I was pouring everything, in the summer, things would bleed a lot more still. Um, I, that's what I find in my shop. So I think that, you know, just, just kind of keep an eye on the temperature. Um, this is again, why I keep notes. Um, because if you find that a certain temperature, if you wait till a certain temperature and a lot of times for, for people that don't really know, you haven't figured it out yet. And the same thing goes for me. I know exactly when I need to pour Alumilite clear slow. I have no clue with, a, uh, with ACC plus. So someday I'm going to have to do some a little bit of testing because I'd rather be using something that has UV inhibitors in it for clear blanks like this. Um, but uh, you'll have to do a little bit of testing, but keep notes so that you know, you know, when it's 95 in my shop, I need to wait till it's 120 degrees or, or whatever the case may be. So just wanted to let you guys know all of that stuff. Yeah, Carrie, uh, I get it. There's links at W, uh, let, me, let me put a link here to my tools I use page. It's awesome. Okay, let me put a link here. I got a, I got a link on my website. So the, the sizes are, for pin blanks, I use three quarter inch PVC pipe. And there's links to where I get this clear stuff. Um, they're not affiliate links, but the place I get it is the best I've found for clear pipes, the cheapest. And you can also just tell them I want a foot or I want, you know, whatever. They'll cut whatever you want. Other places that I bought clear PVC pipe from, you had to buy it in five foot links. Like who's, okay, <laughs> the shipping sucks too. Um, and then there's also, the, the plugs are at Turner's Warehouse though, but those are affiliate links. So if you use my link to these things to buy them on Turner's Warehouse, I'll get a little kickback from Turner's Warehouse. So I appreciate you guys supporting the show that way. Um, but like I said, all that stuff, all those links are on my tools, tools I use page. What was that? So let's see what the temperature is here. I'm going to put the... Double, double down cam. We're at 96, so it's kind of a little bit of a waiting game, guys. In the winter, especially. But you can see, what I was going to say is, I think that it's a good idea to do things like this and see what, what is the viscosity of this stuff. Uh, you know, so, okay, it's 96 degrees. 97.5 now. But get a visual representation so you know what you're looking for, you know. You can, you can temperature gauge this all day long, but, but again, because temperature in your shop, the ambient temperature can kind of affect these things. Um, I recommend kind of knowing what you're looking for of when to pour it. All right. Keep an eye on things. Always try to, you know, be aware of your surroundings. Mm, Philip uses a different resin. Yeah, it depends. Do you use ACC plus or what do you use, Philip? I don't even know what resin you use. I'm gonna need a oh, a lint roller <laughs> for for cleaning these little guys up. Yeah, I don't think so. I'll be all right. No biggie. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, I'm kind of giving you guys the scoop because we've been, like, dribbling, like, email hints and, like, oh, something big is coming and all this stuff um, for, for a couple of weeks now. Uh, part of it was I was going on vacation and I had no nothing else to put in my email newsletters. So my, my assistant was like, hey, well, you could just do this. Um, but uh, keep in mind, guys, the new website is coming. 
And uh, I'm very excited. So we're at 103, 4, about 105. I'm very excited about the new website. I think it's going to be so much easier to get through and find things. Um, I don't know. I think you guys are going to like it. I, I really like it. Very excited about it. And it was super easy to make. I did it on Shopify. Switch to that. And it was way easier than setting up a WordPress website. Total Boat. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've never used Total Boat. Everybody's like, why don't you try it? And I'm like, because I know exactly what I'm doing with Lumalite. <laughs> and so me trying Total Boat is not going to serve any good purposes for anybody. There's so many people that use it, um, you know, that are that are like sponsored by them and stuff that me using it is going to make it look bad. That's that's all that's going to come from it. And I'm not going to want to, I'm not switching to it, so... I've always just stayed away and let other people deal with it. Sometimes I like trying different resins, but at this point, Illumilite's got a resin for every scenario, so. I'd rather, okay, we're at 109, so that's okay though. No big deal. I like, these cups are kind of a pain to get kind of squished. But we're all right. Look at that stuff flow. I'll just fill them up. There we go. Hopefully I'm on the right camera. These things always look amazing. I really like the look of these, these glitter blanks. And these this type of a blank, if you make diamond painting pens, I really that's where these things really shine. Um, I just they're they're so amazing because you're not drilling out the center, right? So there's still gonna be a good amount of glitter and, and body to your blank and you don't have to worry about covering the tube up so anytime you can so diamond painting pens is a good one and, and even i would say um, bottle openers um, you can oh man i don't think i have enough resin all six maybe uh but even bottle openers work pretty well for these things you're not going to get much oh that was just enough yeah, we're a little short on this one. So this is a good opportunity for me to say, this is why I have a notebook, right? Because this guy probably not going to give us, uh, you know, a, you, uh, what, it's not going to give me a sellable pen blank. Uh, obviously, I can still use it, but I wouldn't sell something that's it's not going to work out. So I'm going to put a note in my notebook that we need to add a little bit more resin next time if I'm doing six, uh, six blanks. So I'll look at that and I'll kind of, I'll just, get, I'll just estimate and add a little bit more to, to the total. All right, so we're getting that thing locked down. We get some air hooked to the pressure pot and we're good to go. And then I need to make that note. There we go. So I, I go up to about 70 PSI in my pressure pots. I, I have CA Technologies. The, the max PSI on these pots is 80 PSI. So I, I just, no matter what pot I'm using, I usually don't go to the max. There's usually really no point in the first place, but one of the reasons I kind of like the, the, the higher uh, max PSI rating of these is it has to do with leaks in your pressure pot, actually. Um, not that I, you should be able to get your, your pressure pots, you know, sealed up good enough to where you can leave them, you know, like overnight, no problem with minimal, um, you know, a little, they're all gonna drop a little bit overnight or something like that over many hours, 24 hours or something like that. You're probably gonna drop depends you know i guess but like you're you're probably easy, easily going to see like a five psi difference uh over maybe 24 hours that's acceptable to me uh, but i have a range to work with that's why i like having a high psi you don't need it for the casting part but if your pot starts leaking for some reason or you don't really realize it i have a buffer of you know the minimum that you want to be you, you don't ever really want your pressure pot to drop below 40 psi or so um so realistically i don't i, I recommend not really letting it drop below 45 just to make sure um 
but I have a pretty wide range for it to drop and not, you know, have any issues. That's why I like the higher PSI. It doesn't really do anything else other than that, though. What's the best temperature? I just went over the best temperature to pour at. It depends. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. Um, make sure to rewind because I, I literally just explained that whole thing um, in depth also. All right, so let's see here. Number two, I'll get this thing over here. Number two, who does number two work for? Uh, we're doing the, the handle size. Uh, we're using one and a half inch PVC pipe. So I don't think I explained all that. So we're using three quarter inch for the pen blanks. These guys are one and a half inch. PVC pipes, that's a good size for like handles and stoppers and all that stuff. Not a lot of need to go to like a two inch blank. Typically, unless you want to put like wild, you know, shapes, shaping on it. Um, two inches is just kind of a waste of resin for most people. Um, so we're using SS low set clear resin for both of these. All right, so I need to figure out how much resin I need on these now. Let's see here. Let me look at. Okay. We're going to go with about two. We're going to estimate about 250 grams of resin for each tube, which are six and something, whatever. So we got two of these guys. Oh, <laughs> wrong camera. All right. So we got two one and a half inch guys. I'm going to estimate about 250, I think, for each one. Hopefully that works. It would work. Let me just do some calculations real quick. Um, you can kind of estimate things if you do pi r squared times um, times the height of, of, you know, however long it is, times 0.554, and then I multiply it times 29 to switch from ounces to grams. All right, so it's it's I know it's kind of a wacky mathy thing, but pi 3.14 times the radius squared, so 0.75 squared pi r squared times the height. That's about I'm just going to go with six inches. times 0.554 so let's let's get the calculator going here so i got 0.75 times 0.75 times yeah times 3.14 pi r squared times 6 times 0.554 times 29 is about 170 so yeah i could probably get away with even less but we're just going to go with 250 just to make sure i think i was using it for seven yeah so that was for seven inch let's go with 220 on these guys 220 in each one so 440 which means we're going to mix up 220 and then i'm going to do 222 and then we're going to add Let's see here. So using my kind of estimate, if I wanted to do pen blanks, I was talking about about one teaspoon of this stuff, the glitter, per maybe about 150 grams of resin. Now, again, that was for pen blanks. So we got, you know, about three times that much. So it'd be almost about three teaspoons. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to put two teaspoons in this. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one teaspoon in and I'm going to look at it. I find that that's you know, a good way to look at things as well, uh, or, or estimate things, is just kind of add a, you know, sneak up on it, put a little bit in and see what, is it, what does it look like in the cup. Um, if you're going to be making larger blanks, you know, handles and things like that, or big ones, um, at that point, you can put stuff in the cup and whatever it looks like, whether it be mica pearls or whatever, that's a good example of what it's really going to look like in the end, right? But for pen blanks, a lot of times that is not a good indication of anything. 
because you're looking at a very thick mass of it. So for mica powders, just looking what's at, at what's in the cup is not a good one. You're gonna wanna, you know, dip your 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 stir stick in there and get a, a thinner amount because that's what's really gonna be left. That'll give you a better idea of like micas and things like that. Um, but you know, even for this case, looking in the cup is kind of going to give me an idea of what is this going to look like. How is this this stuff going to be kind of looking distributed in my blank in the final turning thing? All right, so we're going to add one teaspoon question mark and see what happens. And I got to go back and put notes. This was too little, not enough resin on the last one needs probably i'd say 20 grams so i'm going to say to try last time you know for those six pen blanks we use uh, 330 grams total we're going to try 350 next time i think that should nail it okay so let's get a let's see 220 i'm going to need a bigger cup Oh, and I have some 24 ounce cups. Look at that. 24 ounce cup on the scale. Let's see, we got the cameras doing the right things. I'm gonna zero that guy out. Our, just get everything set here. So we need 220 and 222. See where we're at here, 200. Someone say pie, I love pie. You need to put a poll up. Pie versus cake. Did it really go to 229? Scale is really, 218, that's what I thought it would be. Two nineteen point seven. Close enough. Two twenty. And then we need two twenty two of part B. Hopefully this is enough space in the cup. Think about it. Probably would have been smarter to just grab a paint mixing cup, but we'll be okay. 221, there we go, 222, on the dot, oh, 222.1, I'll be okay, I'm okay, Whew. a lot of resin in that little cup, okay, so we're going to use my taller stir stick, and again, for beginners, always uh, scrape the sides of your cup real well. What ends up happening is you're going to pour part A in, right? And then part B is going to be on top. And so there's going to be part B coating the edge up here and part A coating the edge on the bottom. And so you want to make sure you're scraping that stuff and getting all those little particles of part A and part B mixed together. Because what ends up happening is if you don't do that and you happen to get some unmixed resin in your blank, it's just going to be liquid resin. It's not like it's going to cure. All right, and that's all, that's the contention. People always say, "Oh, is it food safe?" and and can I use this to put on a cup? And I'm like, man, I wouldn't do that <laughs> because there's no way to tell if you know that you you happen to get a little bit of liquid, unmixed resin. In. So I I don't really recommend you know using stuff for like high content contact um, food type of things like cups. I would never do that or something that I'm going to put um, you know liquid in and then you know have it be coated with resin i just personally that's what i wouldn't do it you can just do ceramic stuff for that but know that just understand that um that's the that's a big thing you know it can you don't want unmixed resin that screws your projects up right Give it a good stirring stir. Scrape the bottom of the cup, the sides. 
all that stuff. Okay, so we got that going. Now we're going to start with one teaspoon of goodies. And just see what that looks like. Okay. Looking a little thin to me. I'm going to switch to the Sony or the, the Canon and hold this up and hopefully you guys can kind of see. That's looking a little, I don't know. It's okay. Eh. This is, this is the tough one because that's not bad, but I think a little bit more would be a little bit more exciting. So let's, let's go with two teaspoons here. I'm going to put another teaspoon in and then let's take a look. Tough thing is, you know, another full teaspoon, that may be too much. I don't know, but I have a feeling we're going to be okay. I think two teaspoons is going to be the sweet spot. Let me have a look. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think there's going to be enough clear, so there will be enough light going through this. And it, it looks a little funky right now because there's like air bubbles and things in there in between. But I think once this is totally clear... I think that was a pretty good, that's a pretty good look. That's what, that's what I had in mind. And, and like I said, there's no right answer or anything like that. If you want, you can write down, we did two teaspoons for 440 grams for this. Um, if you want, if you want this look, but you know, you can make it thinner if that's what you're going for or a little bit more. But the idea is, you know, sneak up on it, put a little in, see what, see what it looks like. And then, you know, leave it where, where you want it. All right, so now it's just a waiting game again. I'm gonna to switch to the overhead cam and the far away so you can see it. Look at this shirt, Northside Custom Crafts. It's pretty sweet. I'm gonna work out in this thing. It's like a jersey. I'm an athlete. I like it. What am I doing? I'm gonna put this in the glitter jar, or the glitter drawer. Got a few different glitters. Um, one that I found that I saw that I really want to get, there's some um, little dolphin ones. I thought that would be kind of cool. They look good. Some, some of them are a little bit kind of crazy. I think one that would probably sell pretty good depending on the project you make is there's little pot leaf ones. <laughs> pretty sure that would sell pretty good. But I don't know. Um, pot leaves and what are some of the other ones that I've seen that are pretty cool? I don't know. There's all kinds of glitters, though, in, in these shapes. And uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to expand my line. It's a party in a cup. I know. Oh, you're practicing. I, that's, that's not bad. 12 minutes though, I mean really, depending on what you're doing, what are, what are we doing here? Did you say what you were trying to do? Did Philip tell me? Oh, total boat. Really clear, really hard 24 hour cure resin. I don't know, Lumilite clear slow is pretty hard and good. Oh, you don't, okay, you don't have a pressure pot. Um, well, actually, Amazing Clearcast works pretty good, but it's better for larger. It, it, it'll harden up pretty well for larger things, for sure. When you pour it thin, you got to wait a while. A little while. Let's see. Liquid, I mean, Liquid Diamond is okay. I'm not sure. Um, another one that, you know, if you're looking to try a, a few different resins, one to, to try out and just see is entropy um i they have pretty good resin um i've tried their i don't think i tried their slow version but there's the ccr clear casting resin i think is what that stands for um <laughs> i have a little i like them because my snowboard the the snow lots of snowboard companies use entropy it's not the same one we'd use for for resin casting but they use an entropy resin um, to make snowboards with. And so I, I've, I know about entropy anyway, but I, I did give them a try for some casting and it, it was just their, I want to say I just used their regular CCR, but that stuff was pretty hard. 
And it was like a, you know, I don't know. They have a faster cure that's that's like an overnight, pr probably kind of pull it out of the pressure pot uh, or, you know, whatever, demolding time, uh, kind of an overnight thing. And then they have a slower one that would be longer. I'm not I, I it's been a while since I used it, but it was pretty hard stuff. Um, I found it, it cured up pretty well and it was super clear. Maybe give that a shot, you know, try it out. I think the prices were somewhat reasonable. Not any worse than anywhere else. All right, so let's see where we're at. I can tell it's not even warm. <laughs> not even warm yet. 84. Yeah, so it's it's only 68 degrees in the shop right now, so. Got some time to Time to kill in between. So let's see, what else is uh, happening with you guys? Anybody working on any cool projects that they want to share? Or? Where do I find these crazy glitters? There's all kinds of places. Uh, Glitter Hippo has a lot of things. Uh, I don't know if, it's been a while since I ordered stuff from Glitter Hippo. I'm not sure what their deal is with the shape ones lately, um, but you can find a ton of different glitters on Etsy, eBay, I think. Um, at Michael's, honestly, no. This stuff, uh, my wife, where the heck did I put the jar? My wife bought the jar. Here it is. She bought this thing. Um, and I don't know what Starcraft, I guess, is the brand. All oh, these ones are called sweater weather. Um, so I, I don't know. She bought this on. She was buying some vinyl for her cricket. She was one of those like cricket vinyl machine things. Um, so she she saw this and was like, oh, these might be fun. So she bought me that and. Um, there's another brand I bought the the shamrocks I bought. Now I got to be honest, a lot of these places are ridiculously expensive. I'm sure that this doesn't cost that much, but um, Backfist Customs is another one. That's where I bought the shamrock ones from. Um, but you know, there, really, like I said, um, I don't think there's any difference between any of these kind of holographic shape glitter things. So if you can find the same one for a better deal somewhere, I don't think it's better or less or, you know, like <laughs> quality is the same. I think they all come from the same tub somewhere in China, I think. Um, so yeah, glitter hippo. There's a couple other webs, like random websites. If you just type in like holographic shape glitter or, you know, if you're looking for something specific. Um, so that's where you, uh, I get the, the tinsel glitter, like the longer strand ones that I use in my, my, uh, pen blanks. I get that stuff from Glitter Hippo. Um, but uh, one thing I, I mentioned this before, be be warned um, with the shipping issues, all this stuff is coming from China. So uh, like with Glitter Hippo, I just tried to order some of the tinsel glitter colors that I use and they're out. So I'm, I, I haven't heard back whether it's because they're discontinuing those colors. I kind of doubt it because they're, they seem to be the popularest, <laughs> the most popular ones. I'm guessing that that stuff is sitting on a boat somewhere and they, they haven't been able to restock it just like everywhere else. Oh, nice. Sweet. Custom silicone mold. Nice. Yeah, I, I got uh, I got a couple ideas. Actually, I need to talk to Philip. Me and Philip need to have a little chat sometime because I got an idea for another I I had an idea for a custom coaster mold but I have a better idea that I that I that me I I may actually really need it for my blanks that I sell so it'll be a custom silicone mold uh plus have you guys seen did you guys see the the cool ornament thing that uh that Philip me Philip and his wife made um it's like a really oh, it was so cool you guys got to check that out. Go, go and follow them on, Inst you know, either uh, philip.danner or Danner Builds on Instagram. I'm just going to go get a link. We're not, we're not even there yet. Let me just go to Instagram, get a link for you guys. 
you got to follow uh, Philip and check out this wicked uh, mold and project that they made. It was so cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the Danner Builds one. They got links to their store. You want to buy? I totally want to buy one of those things. There you go. Instagram. Chat's open when you're here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I know. I know. And I've been talking about getting those a set of those um, coaster molds. It's just the problem is I haven't bought any of those because I don't. I haven't had any any need to make coasters lately. But I do like the way that you make yours. So we're at 101. Uh, we want to wait till about 90. I mean, realistically, I'm looking at this. The viscosity of this is probably reasonably fine as it is, but I want to wait longer um, because it's going to have a, you know, the, it's, it's more the working time. And I want to pour it when it's closer. You don't want to pour it too late because it could be too late, right? It, and it's, it's like setting up, literally. So you don't want to wait too long. It needs to still be liquid, but it can be pretty chunky, you know, pretty, pretty blobby. And still be okay so we're gonna wait till last time we waited till about 108 9 something like that 109 maybe even 110 and we were fine it was okay uh now one thing to to mention so you know we did the pen blanks and i already put it in the pressure pot so lumilite clear slow the d mold time is like two to four hours depending um, for these, what I find for pen blanks, I just find them to be easier to demold if I just do them at the end of the day and then w wait overnight. I usually come in, you know, around noon or something like that, 10, 10 to noon sometime. It's when I get out to the shop and they're good to go. They, they just demold nice and easy. Everything's good. But bare minimum, I would leave these in for four hours. That's plenty of time. Um, for these bigger ones, you could probably two hours, maybe three, let's say, you know, just to be sure it's a little cooler in the shop. In the summer, when it's warmer in your shop, um, your your temperatures, you can usually get away with maybe a little, couple, you know, a little bit less time in the pressure pot sometimes, just because it's kind of cooking in there. Got a little extra help. So we're at 110. We're good to go. 107 was what I was actually kind of shooting for, but... Whatever. 110 is fine, too. I mean, technically, I could even wait longer before pouring this stuff, probably, but... I'm going to pour to that line and just kind of see where we're at here. Move that up. Move this one down. All right, so I got plenty. Fill these guys. A little extra here. Need uh there it is. I'm gonna say I need my pendant. I need this like to cut this thing up because it would be more useful if it was like um not so big. Just pop in the pressure pot, you know. It's always good to have a little bit. Oh, that was a little too much there. Only too much there. That's okay. Uh, always good to have some extra molds laying around and stuff. Um, depending on you know what your your depending on what's going on. Just in case you have a little extra resin, or just have this. You know, like a lot of people have like this extra. Hopefully there's enough. Whoa, hopefully there's enough room in here. Uh, people have, you know, like they'll have like a pipe or something. Oh man, it's not gonna work. Crap. Okay, we're just gonna waste those things. No, I think I can ease in without spilling them. Okay, we're okay, but it is gonna deform it. It's okay. You always want to put silicon molds on something flat before putting them in pressure pots. Otherwise, you will get what's known as banana blanks. <laughs> it was so funny, I didn't even know what was causing that. So I'll, I'll show you like a good example in a second. 
Um, so like, you know, for, for like your kind of typical, these kind of typical pen blank things, oh, stop the shake. If I just put this in a pressure pot, the pressure pot base is kind of curved. And so I, I, and I didn't, I could never understand why are my blanks always coming out like banana blanks, I call them when they're like curved. Right? And I finally realized that the pressure, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly why, how this all works, the, like the, what the physics are going on, I guess, but it does, comp it compresses your mold down and it kind of forces it to, it's going to follow whatever curve. So you always want to put, you know, put them on some, a piece of wood or something like that. If it's like a silicon floppy kind of mold, um, you don't have to do that with, you know, your, your HDPE hard, you know, molds, but it took me a while. And then I'm like, oh, and it, and it wouldn't happen certain times, you know, and then I finally put all the pieces together that every time I put it on a hard surface, it doesn't do that. And then it, that it's conforming to, you know, the, the pressure pot. Now there is one thing you can also do. Another way to go is, is just put a, a disc or something in the bottom. Um, and you, so you could just do wood. Um, Turner's warehouse actually sells HDPE pieces that'll fit into pressure pots for the bases. So lots of different ways to go there, but I, I pressurize everything. Okay. So go to this camera. I'm going to wipe off. I like to wipe off the, the stir stick. That way it's ready to go. I can, you know, use it right away for something else. I'll just wipe off that, you know, the, the kind of wet resin, which I, I typically, I would have done that a little bit earlier. Usually with gloves on too. Um, but I also like to wipe it off with acetone, especially in this case, cause that was kind of halfway set up. Get everything nice and clean. I don't have to worry about it air dry it a little bit and then it's ready to mix something next time so anyway guys i thought uh hopefully that you guys enjoyed watching that and hopefully the the like tips um you know i just i get these questions all the time about you know how do you suspend the glitter and it's it's super simple it's not hard but you do have to follow a couple little rules i guess or or you know things to make sure that you don't have any issues um you know and everything kind of uh, you know, either stays kind of put for the most part or that, you know, key, add that extra. You know, if you're going to be making a five inch blank, may, pour a six inch blank. That way, if it if it kind of drops a little bit, you just cut off an inch of it and you got your five inch blank, you get rid of the waste. Yes, you're wasting some resin, but whatever, you know, <laughs> like just get rid of that resin and you're fine. It's not that expensive. Um, but you get good results that way. And again, I mean, you can, you can pour it, you know, horizontally. Um, there are ways I find personally that it, you don't get as good results, especially with like pen blanks. Um, but you know, follow those same rules and you can get decent results doing that. Um, but you know, you'll probably want to pour more, um, and then cut off the top of your brick. So, oh, Daryl, thank you for the, the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, so does anybody have any like questions about this? I know it was kind of, we've done this a, a few times, but I, again, also I, I wanted to, my wife gave me this recently. So I, I thought, let's get on it. She might, she might even be watching. She has work to do. So she's probably, even if she might be kind of linger, you know, what do they call that? Lurking, <laughs> watching. So hi Gretchen, if you're watching. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to get these things done. I'll, I'll probably make her a pen. Now, one thing I do want to mention about doing pen blanks with this stuff so before, before we go, and I have a video, I'm going to link to a video too. Very important. You'll get all the information pretty much out of what I, what I say here. But um, if you want to watch a cool video, you can check that out too. Um, because I'm not going to be able to show you all this stuff. Uh, let me go to my channel real quick and find... I can find this. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to share. Shush, shush, dude. Okay, copy and paste. So there's a video, but uh, what I wanted to show you guys is we were kind of talking about how much of the glitter to put in and how for pen, and this is specifically for pen blanks. You don't really have to worry about this if you're doing something that you're not drilling the center out and turning it down to a, like a thin wisp of, of stuff, right? Uh, but if you're doing pen blanks, 
So here's one of my, I call this lucky day. This is a, a pen blank that I sell on my website. Um, it's got the shamrocks and a little bit of the gold flake. So I made this pen and this is what you can kind of expect, right? So there's quite a bit of, you know, areas on this pen that are clear. Uh, and the other thing to think about is everywhere that there's not glitter is going to be dead clear, you know, no resin or I mean, uh, no, you know, no stuff. So you're going to be seeing the tube all the way through. So what do you do about that and, and why that looks good is you gotta, you're going to have to paint the inside of the blank, not the tubes, the inside of the blank on these things. So you'll drill out your, your, you know, cut your blanks to size, drill it out. And then you're going to, the way I do it, I, I use paint, spray paint, and I just uh, kind of, you know, give it a, a few squirts um, and try and cover the inside of that, that, that blank itself. That way you're not going to see any glue splotches or anything. And it looks awesome. Now, the thing to keep in mind though, is it's really going to kind of look like those areas are kind of, they're going to take on that, the color, that paint, basically, whatever paint color that is. Um, so let me, let me kind of show this one more time. You know, it's, it's going to be what you, so you gotta, you gotta pick a good color, <laughs> you know, that's going to look good with what your glitter and all that kind of stuff. Typically I find white is, is one of the best ways to go, frankly. Um, it's going to reflect a, a good amount of light, which brightens the blank itself. Um, and it just tends to go with most things. So I, I will throw that out there. White's a, you know, if, if you're not sure, white's a good way to go. Um, but so check out that video because I show, you know, the whole process and all that stuff. But like I said, in a nutshell, that's, that's what I do. That's how you get around all that stuff. Um, one thing that I didn't have in that video, and it's, it's a tip that I, I read from um, uh, Flower Girl Blanks. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah Flower Girl Blanks. Um, I was reading how she, she has information on how to, to deal with her blanks. She, she makes flower blanks, um, kind of like the ones that I made, like all, exactly like the ones I made kind of. I was kind of inspired by what she makes to, to do these things. And I was kind of curious to see she had instructions on how to, you know, how to deal with her, you know, prepare her blanks like these. And it's kind of the same idea as these glitter things. You know, I'm thinking, okay, she, you probably got to paint the inside. That's probably what she's going to say. One thing that she had in her instructions, most of everything was all the same. But the one thing that, that was new that I, I really liked, and, I, and I'm going to try this. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to probably do it from now on, uh, is to uh, take a Q-tip and use denatured alcohol and just swab or maybe even acetone, whatever, just swab off the inside of your blank before painting it. I think you're going to get a better paint, um, like adhesion. You know, it's plastic, so it's one of the harder things for to paint, basically. Um, but I think that that might actually help out a little bit. That was what she was saying. Um, she even mentioned, I think, that she douses the inside with CA, th the super thin CA, um, and and then I don't know. I got to go look at her instructions. But <laughs> let me let me actually look at her instructions. I got. I think there's a video. Let me see if what was her steps? Dang it! Tutorials. Okay, so I'm going to link to a video here because I think that however she recommended doing it, and she makes amazing blanks too. So I just want to put that out there. Check that out. However she does it is in that video because she made a video showing, you know, how to prepare blanks. But the two different things where you can douse the inside with that thin CA um, and also, like I said, just wiping off the surface with uh, like a denatured alcohol or something. It was kind of a brilliant idea that, you know, I was like, that, that makes a lot of sense. So um, do whatever you can to get a good even, you know, paint on the inside and your, your pens are going to look fabulous. Um, if, if you get that paint on there, you know, Totally, uh, you're going to win no matter what kind of glitter or whatever you put in your blank. All right, guys. So let's see if I missed any questions here now. Um, I don't really find that you need it heavy or anything like that. I just use paint, uh, spray paint, like your Krylon. You want to have the one that's like a paint and primer all in one. Um, I know a lot of people use acrylic paints and this and that. But here's the problem, though. 
The reason I don't actually recommend a heavy paint or a thick paint um, and, the, and why I go with spray paint is because if you load up a ton of paint in there, then your tubes are not going to fit very well. You're, you're really going to need to drill a bigger hole than normal because the tube's not going to go in. So I recommend just doing very thin wisps of spray paint um, because that stuff is one of the best to actually adhere to plastics. It's, it's one of the better paints out there. Um, so whatever you use, I, I recommend using something that's that's a thin paint. Um, but you just kind of give it some things, you know, little tufts, some some kind of like the way that I do my my uh, you know mold release stuff. Just shoot some kind of you know. You don't need to get it all in one time. You know, just shoot on a, a thin amount and then you know let it sit. Put on another coat, maybe two or three. And just get the whole thing covered but it's going to make things a lot easier when you go to try and glue the tube in if you haven't added a bunch of junk in there basically and so that's that's one thing about the ca glue thing um dousing the inside you got to kind of be a little bit careful with that too because it's going to add stuff that the tube needs to go through so bare minimum i like the idea of just cleaning out the inside with with a like denatured alcohol or something like that i think that would probably improve your your adhesion a little bit um, so just give it a shot. I think it'll I think it'll work pretty good. Yeah, Steve, and actually you can just pour resin in the bottom of your pressure pot. I don't even know that silicone's a great idea because it's it's compressible kind of um you could just literally dump a bunch of resin in there and that'll level it out but my only problem with doing things like that is the minute that you move your pressure pot somewhere else it's not level anymore and it's never going to be until you redo that so just just kind of keep that in mind a little bit yeah no problem mark i appreciate it <clears throat> all right so i don't think i see any sorry it took me a minute to kind of read all those okay i don't think i missed anything all right guys so uh next week we'll be doing something else i think coming up soon i don't know we got a couple of things that came in the shop all right um one <laughs> so you guys are gonna laugh Leah sent, so I already had this left over from, <laughs> I still have a ton of this stuff. And she's like, hey, I got more. She like, sh I don't, it's like she vacuum stuffed more yarn scraps into a medium flat rate box. So we got, oh my God, serious, serious fabric scraps going on. So we're going to need to make some more blanks. Um, I wanted to make, I wanted to do some testing. You know, we, we did the whole you know, compressing the heck out of it. You know, we made some knife scales and some pen blanks and, and that big, uh, like four inch blank. Um, what I wanna do though, is try not compressing the heck out of it. You know, I'm just putting, you know, putting a good amount in, probably larger blanks, like a bowl blank, uh, maybe probably do another four inch and then maybe probably turn something almost exactly like what I turned already. That'll give us a good comparison, but just kind of see how does this stuff work? You know, when you compress the heck out of it, I, I really enjoyed the results on the pen blank as well as on that bowl or a little, you know, kind of pedestal kind of cup thing. Um, I want to try that out and I want to also make some bigger stuff. That stuff is really cool. So uh, we're going to be kind of messing around with that. We'll probably do, you know, some, some pen blanks as well. And, and just not, you know, try to load it up a lot, but not really compress the heck out of it, you know. That's one of the things that I don't really enjoy doing. If it's going to be a gigantic mess and you got to pull clamps out and do all this stuff, I'm like, Ugh. I'd rather just throw things in a, in a tub, you know, in a mold and just whatever, you know. It's just there's so many things you can make that work that are easier. So, uh, so I want to see how that works, see if it works that way or not. So we'll be doing that. And then the other thing, uh, Doug to sell from Fleetswood shop sent out some aluminum shavings. And uh, I'm telling you guys, everyone's like, oh my God, it's the murder bowl again. <laughs> from uh, Peter Brown made this bowl, if you aren't familiar, and sent it to Carl, a bowl blank, and it had aluminum shavings in it. But 
And it's funny because everybody thinks, like, Carl was turning this thing and, and he was getting, like, bloodied. It was like the chips were, 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 were causing his hands to bleed and stuff. And so everybody thinks that the aluminum shavings were, like, the murder part. And frankly, it was just because he made it out of polyester resin. Those chips were just, like, tearing his hands up. So I don't really think whatever we make is going to be so murderous, you know. But I'm actually thinking about, like, a murder pitcher or, or something. I, I don't want to do a bowl since they already did that. Uh, but I'm also debating whether I should make it and send it to Carl just, <laughs> just because or not. So we got some of that. And then the other thing that we got is, let's see here. I got a box of really cool woods uh, from Scott. Uh, Scott Wishart, he's the one that did the, the MS Society, the bike race thing. And, and um, he's the X-Wing Sphere guy, if you don't know. I'm going to switch to this view, I think. So he sent me a whole box plus a t-shirt for the, the MS race. I'll be wearing that on the stream pretty soon here. But he sent out some really nice, beautiful chunks of wood, some blanks and stuff, um, which I think these guys might, I think these are holly. I don't know. He didn't label these ones, but I'm pretty sure they're holly. Um, a couple of pretty long holly rods. Yeah, these guys. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure all of this stuff is holly. And look how look how clear this stuff is. It's just white. It just looks white. Look at that. Bam. We got a couple. There's a couple of streaks and things in these guys, but still pretty sweet. Uh, he sent me a pine cone. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Um, this is interesting. Kentucky coffee tree. Has anybody heard of that? Kind of uh, a little bit oaky looking. I don't know. Kind of an interesting, uh, inter and look at how big that is. Pretty big blank. So we got some of that and then a piece of spalted maple. Look at that. Oh my God. Definitely going to have, this stuff is, this is light. I'm going to definitely have to stabilize this guy up. Definitely, I think we're doing multi-die. Um, the, the spalting lines, a lot of times when you do multiple die colors, it like blocks colors. So you can actually kind of almost do like regions in, in the spalting and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Um, so I'll be stabilizing this up. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what to do with these. Cause I, you know, you know me guys, I don't really turn wood, just wood. Um, so I think we're going to do something and make blanks out of these somehow. I'm just not entirely certain. I don't have a game plan yet, let's say, but I am pretty excited to do something. You know what I mean? So we got lots of cool stuff coming up soon. Um, so next Wednesday, we will do something. We might do the murder bowl thing, might do the fabric scraps. I'm not entirely certain. There's a lot of stuff going on though. The, this, this next couple weeks with this new website, the, the new rebranding and all kinds of craziness going on. So I may choose to do something a little bit low key, <laughs> something simple um, where we just kind of maybe play around for a little bit and keep it short because I'm going to be pretty busy um, one of the things, if you're going to rebrand like I'm doing, which all I'm doing is just changing the business name, getting a new website, logos, and all that stuff. For the most part, everything else is going to stay the same besides some, you know, while we're doing all this stuff, a couple minor improvements here and there. Um, but it's all going to be pretty much the same thing with a different business name, basically. But you got to switch out all the graphics on every social media thing on the planet and, you know, your YouTube banner. Um, you got to change, you know, like the, the names of things. And so like, there's a lot of random stuff, a lot of like, you know, bare bones business things that I need to mess around with bank accounts and all this. So, um, b bottom line is I'm going to be pretty busy getting, making sure everything's running and up, up and running, or, um, you know, we, we've switched things out the right way and all this stuff over the next few weeks. So if I decide if for some reason I decide to cancel a, a, a Wednesday stream, that's why. Um, I don't plan to do that, but if that happens, that's probably what's going on is something came up that it, I got to fix right now kind of thing. So I'm pretty excited though. Uh, the new, I, I really love my new logo. I like the new business name and all that stuff. Um, and I'm really excited about the new website especially. So I can't wait to launch that. Uh, it's going to be launching in, in a couple weeks here. Actually, 
It's going to be launching even sooner than that. Hmm. What day is this? Yeah, so it's going to be launching in the next week, I think, everything. I thought I had a, a week and a half or so, but I think about a week. So uh, be looking for all the announcements. Obviously, I'm going to be pasting stuff all over the place. I'm going to do a YouTube video kind of explaining everything um, and, and kind of going through the website to show you guys around if you, if for anybody that, that uses the website. So it should be pretty fun. I'm, looking to, I'm really looking forward to it, so I hope you guys are too. Uh, let's see. Murder Pitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Something. See what else do we got here? Yarn turned into an egg. That'd be cool. Cool. All right. So let's see here. Rolling down. Another murder ball. Oh man. I might have to. I might have to. A rainbow murder bowl. That'd be cool. Voting polls until December 7th. Well, I hope you don't work too much, but we'll miss you. We'll see you when you come back. Thanks for your hard work doing all that stuff. Jim's here from Idaho. Well, welcome. We're just about to wrap up. Sorry about that. Uh, you got a new easy chuck. Way to go, Jim. Those things are fabulous. I, I'm telling you. I had the... Um, what is it called? I can't think of the. I had the Nova one that was like the quick change kind of thing. I got to be honest. I mean, it was all right. What I, this is what really annoyed me. Everything was like, if you, to tighten the chuck down, it was backwards. Like, you, like righty tighty is how I tighten things. And I don't know if this is like a weird, like Australian, New Zealand thing or something, but you always like, it was always backwards to tighten things. And I, I just, I was fed up. And I finally asked uh, uh, Chris over at, um, at uh, Easywood Tools. I, I literally put a post out and I'm like, hey, is your chuck righty tighty? And he's like, yeah, of course it is. And I'm like, I'm buying one. So and actually they ended up sending me one. Fabulous chuck. If anybody's looking for a four jaw chuck, I really highly recommend the Easy Chuck. It's just, it does a lot of really cool stuff and it's a really good chuck, so. Anyway, easy wood chuck rules. It does. Jamie knows. Cool. Anyway, so I'm going to be heading out, guys. Thanks for joining the fun tonight. I will post probably like a, a you know, like the short video, like the shorts on YouTube. I'll post a little video of the like demolding, getting them out. There's not a lot to do to these things. So, you know, you pull them out and they're pretty much that's what they're going to look like. Um, and then I'm probably gonna, these will probably go, I'm, what I'm doing is the stuff that we make on the stream, I'm putting for the mystery boxes for the most part. So um, that is something that's gonna be coming. And I know Gene and, and, and a few people were, I have a team of people that were supposed to do testing for the mystery boxes, but I just had so many other things going on that I, I haven't got around to that. So um, they will be the first three in line um, to do the mystery boxes, but that's what I'm doing is saving those things for mystery boxes. And that's kind of, mostly that's kind of what we're going to be doing those and giveaways for the things that we make on the, on the stream, just to kind of let everyone know, kind of going to get away from, from doing, um, like the short runs, not all the time, basically. So, I uh, just wanted to let you guys know about that. That's like a slight little minor change. Not everything's going to be available, uh, that we make on the show, unless you're a mystery box person, but uh, anyway, so those will be coming soon. And anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for the big launch and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys all on next Wednesday's live stream. It'll be fun. 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. And we'll make something else. So have a good night, guys. Thanks for joining the fun.